topic of the day, my Malkins moments. I have some great Malkins moments for you. Four key Malkins moments. So, first of all, Ryan Getzlove, speaking of uh, Staples Center, even though the Anaheim Ducks, they play in Anaheim, but yeah, it's close enough with LA. Close enough connection. Not not my best not my best segue, but works uh, works nonetheless. Uh, Ryan Getzlove of the Anaheim Ducks collected his 1,000th point of his NHL career in an assist that he accumulated last night in the 3-2 to two overtime win over the Washington Capitals. This is a guy that's won a Stanley Cup with the Anaheim Ducks, and it's impressive what Ryan Getzlove has, has done. And again, to, to reach that milestone, any, anytime you can reach a milestone, I think against Alex Ovechkin in the Capitals, that has a slightly different ring to it. And a big shout out to him and uh, and his team. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, Kevin Cash won his second consecutive AL Manager of the Year award. He led the Rays to their second consecutive division title. This past year, he became just the second man to win the Manager of the Year award in back-to-back years. The other was the Hall of Fame, uh, the Hall of Famer Bobby Cox, who took the NL League honors in 2004 and 2005 with the Atlanta Braves. But what's impressive about Kevin Cash? This is a guy, first of all, who's 43 years old, seventh season at the helm. Is he's been doing this with the fifth smallest spending. Uh, uh, amount of money that he can spend. So the si- the, the fifth smallest budget in, in the MLB that he's been able to craft this type of success and these types of successful seasons. That's what's been impressive about what he's been doing is he's really kind of strapped for cash. He's been competing against the, the veteran Boston Red Sox, who he had a better record than this year, against the high-powered Houston Astros, who he had a better record than this year competing against the riches is 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 an understatement uh the the tycoon that is the new york yankees and how much money that they have overflowing in within that organization and yet he managed to beat out all those teams for a better record and you know he lost charlie morton he lost blake snell in the offseason, their best starting pitcher, uh, Glasnow, had Tommy John surgery. And yet they still managed to battle through that and finish with the best record in the AL East. They had to deal with the up-and-coming Rays, who have just been have just been on a tear. With, with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the kid who's been unbelievable, they had to deal with that upstart team. And they finished with the third most wins, 100 wins, in the majors, despite all that. Uh, and only one of their position players, Mike Zunino, actually was named an all-star this year. So they only had one positional player be named an all-star this year, which, it, it, again, speaks to speak to his savviness and how good of a coach he really is. Again, this is a guy who was a major league catcher from 2002 to 2010. He served as an advanced scout for the Blue Jays in 2012 as a Cleveland bullpen coach from 20, uh, 2013 to 2014. The Rays hired him in 2014 to succeed uh, Joe Madden, and the first three years were a struggle, finished sub-500. But then in his fourth year, they won 90, they won 90 games. And uh, in 2018, they claimed a wild-card spot in 2019, 2020. They obviously lost to the Dodgers in six games. And then last year, they set a franchise record for the most wins, third most wins in the MLB last year with with 100. Uh, and again, they, they ultimately lost to the Red Sox in the AL Championship Series this year. They, they got they got very close. So he's done a fantastic job with that organization, deserves a lot of credit. And speaking of another individual that deserves a lot of credit is Gabe Kepler, who won the – Gabe Kapler, rather – who won the NL Manager of the Year for leading the Giants to 107 wins, which is the most wins in franchise history. In fact, he became just the first Giants manager to win the award since uh, 
since what's his name? Dusty Baker. Blanking on his name this morning. I was thinking about him. D- Dusty Baker, obviously, I was thinking about the Houston, uh, the Houston Astros. Oh, he's part of that organization. So uh, with, with Dusty Baker, again, he received 28 of the 31st place votes. He joins Dusty Baker, who's a three-time winner, is the only men in Giants history to receive the award. Uh, Bruce Bocci, the legendary Giants manager uh, who guided this franchise to three World Series titles. That's who... Gabe Kapler had to follow after. It was only fitting that Bocce actually made the statement on MLB Network to him. A nice gesture. Uh, of course, Kapler replaced Bocce after the 2019 season. So this was the first time that they've claimed the division title in nine in, in nine years. The Dodgers had won eight straight division titles leading up to this year. And they managed to outpace them by a game. And they had a great year, and he's a big he's a big reason why. And finally, big shout out to the Georgia Bulldogs football program because this is a program that it right now is ten and zero after beating uh, Tennessee, destroying them forty one to seventeen. But they're eight and zero in the SEC for the first time in program history. First time ever in program history, they have started out having a perfect season. In the in the SEC eight and zero, obviously they still have two games remaining in the schedule, but they've never started off eight and zero in SEC play before. Uh, obviously, Kirby Smart has done a fantastic job, and perhaps it looks like they're poised to make a serious serious run at the title this year. Looks like he's got the best Georgia team that he's ever had. Even though one could argue that national championship game against Alabama with Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Hurts. That team was was right there. They had a great chance to win that that uh, that that NCAA championship. Obviously, they came up a little bit short, but they have this collision course to play Alabama number two in the SEC championship game on December fourth in Atlanta. So we'll see. He might get a chance to exact some revenge at that time. That will do it for us. That's all the time that I got for you today. Finishing a couple minutes early. Thank you so much for joining me on Morning Joe every single Monday and Wednesday morning, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 to 11 Central, and 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube page, Morning Joe with Jonah Malkin. Follow me on Twitter at Morning underscore Joe underscore at Jonah Malkin. Follow me on Instagram, jmalkin97, or on TikTok, Jonah Malkin. And as always, have a lovely rest of your morning.